octave of St. Thomas of Canterbury. The lesson is taken from the exposition of the 118 Psalm by St. Ambrose, Bishop of Milan. Princes have persecuted me without a cause, but my heart standeth in awe of thy word. These are rightly the words of a martyr, who bareth unjustly the torments of the persecutors, who hath robbed no man, who hath violently oppressed no man, who hath shed the blood of no man, who hath imagined to defile the bed of no man, who is debtor to the laws in nothing, and who is punished more grievously than if he were a robber, who speaketh righteousness, and there is none that will hear, who speaketh salvation, and all men fight against him, who is able to say, when I spoke unto them, they fought against me without a cause. They fight against him without a cause, who can lay no sin to his charge, they fight against him as an evil doer, who is by their own acknowledgement righteous, they fight against him as a warlock, who glorieth in the name of the Lord, and who doth all things well because he doth all things for God's sake. They fight against him in vain, who is accused of ungodliness among the ungodly and the unfaithful, because he teacheth faith. Verily, him that is fought against without a cause it behoveth to be strong and patient. Wherefore then saith he, My heart standeth in awe of thy word? Awe is the mark of the weak, the timid, and the fearful. But there is also a weakness unto salvation, there is a fear which is an holy fear. O oh, fear the Lord, all ye as saints. And again, blessed is the man that farreth the Lord. And wherefore is he blessed? Because he delighteth greatly in his commandments. Think then, how the martyr standeth between two dangers. On the one hand the wild beasts, roaring for his blood, do indeed strike terror. He heareth the hissing of the plates of white-hot metal and see surging up the flames of the fiery furnace. Behind him is the clanking of fetters, and beside him the executioner, stained with fresh blood. Think of him there, face to face with the apparatus of death, but think again of what thinketh he? Of the law of God, of the everlasting fire, of the eternal flames wherein the unbelieving shall bump forever, of that torture whereof the agony is forever new. And then indeed his heart faileth for fear, lest by giving way under torment here, he should give himself up to everlasting torment hereafter, then indeed he trembleth, when faith maketh to glitter before his eyes the awful sword of the judgment to come. And in this, the faithful trembling of the true hearted, are there not both unshaken hope of the eternal things, and all of the things of God? Amen. The lesson is taken from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In Elo Tempo Rei. At the time, Jesus said unto the Pharisees, I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd giveth his life for his sheep. And so on. Homily by Pope St. Gregory the Great. Dearly beloved brethren, ye have heard from the Holy Gospel what is at once your instruction, and our danger. Behold, how he who, not by the varying gifts of nature, but of the very essence of his being, his goodness, behold how he saith, I am the good shepherd. And then, he saith what is the character of his goodness, even of that goodness of his which we must strive to copy, the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. As he had foretold, even so did he. As he had commanded, so gave he in sample. The good shepherd gave his life for the sheep, and made his own body and his own blood to be our sacramental food, pasturing upon his own flesh the sheep whom he had bought. He by despising death, hath shown us how to do the like. He hath set before us the mold wherein it behoveth us to be cast. Our first duty is, freely and tenderly to spend our outward things for his sheep, but lastly, if need be, to serve the same by our death also. From the light offering of the first, we go on to the stern offering of the last, and, if we be ready to give our life for the sheep, why should we scruple to give our substance, seeing how much more is the life than meat? And some there be which love the things of this world better than they love the sheep, and such as they deserve no longer to be called shepherds. These are they of whom it is written, but he that is an hireling, 
and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, and loveth the sheep, and fleeth. He is not a shepherd, but an hireling which feedeth the Lord's sheep, not because he loveth their souls, but because he doth gain earthly wealth thereby. He that taketh a shepherd's place, but seeketh not gain of souls, that same is but an hireling. Such and one is ever ready for creature comforts, he loveth his preeminence, he groweth sleek upon his income, and he liketh well to see men bow down to him. Amen. Benedicat vos omnipotens Deus, Potter, et Filius, et Spiritus Sanctus. Amen.